Hello, I wasn't particularly planning on getting any new art materials, but I had some Jackson art credit and then a couple of other things popped up. So I have a little art haul video for you today. So I've got this big Jackson's art box and I can't remember everything that was in it. So let's take a look. Okay, so one thing I wanted to try out was the Snellier oil pastel pad. I've really been enjoying oil pastels lately and I was curious what it would be like to use the actual paper from Snellier. So each sheet has got some glassine in between it. Okay, kind of feels like hot press watercolour paper really. It's quite nice and thick. Yeah that's really handy. So when I've been using oil pastels so far I've just been putting sheets of deli paper in between the pages. So I just cut them to size and put them in between like that. Um, and then the other related thing I got, some oil pastel fixative. At some point I'll have a play around with how thick or thinly blended the oil pastel needs to be for this to work. I can't imagine it working on really, really thick oil pastels. And then I did a video a little while back on my different brushes and one viewer recommended getting a brush cleaner. And so I picked up some of this, the master's brush cleaner and preserver, because to be honest, I don't really give my brushes much care and attention. So, mm, it smells quite nice. And then, And then there were a couple of products that I wanted to try out. One was a Caran d'Ache pastel pencil. The only other pastel pencils I've got are these Derwent ones. And I'd seen some reviews saying that the Caran d'Ache ones are super. So I just picked a shade of green. I know it will get a lot of use. I thought I would give that a go. So I'll just have a quick scribble now. So this is the Derwent Olive Green. And then this is Reseda, or Light Reseda. Kind of feels softer, like less scratchy when it's going down. I don't know if you can hear the sound difference there. It's just kind of less chalky, less chalkboardy when it goes on. Almost like there's kind of an oily element to it. And then, oh yeah, I wanted to try out a couple of different brands of oil pastels. So I picked up two uh, Holbein Artists Oil Pastels and you can buy them individually in these little packs. So again, I just picked colours that I use quite a lot of. I'll try these out later in the video. So I've also got this package from Ken Bromley Art Supplies. So Ken Bromley are good at doing samples on their website. So I picked up the Maymary, actually I don't know how to pronounce it, Maymary Blue, just a couple of um, dot samples of their paints. And also Rosa Gallery's newest paints, 
which I think are mainly granulating paints and a couple of metallics. Oops. Okay. So I also wanted to try out some Caran d'Achenio pastels as well. So I just picked up again a few of the colours I use most often, like landscapey colours. I'll swatch those out in a minute. Ah, and these are some Rosa Gallery watercolours. When I'd seen that there was this chart, I looked up online at some of the colours being swatched out and I thought I'd get some of them anyway because the Rosa Gallery paints are really inexpensive and some of the new ones are really, really pretty. Again, I'll swatch these out in a minute. So I've got maroon brown, golden brown, oh, opera rose, violet black, jade green, cobalt grey, and magenta grey. So this was a sample. I've got a few chroma flows and I do quite like them. I think they're most similar to Prismacolor pencils. And I was just curious to see if I'd receive a different colour, which I have done, which is lovely. And then I also picked up a sample of the Derwent pastel pencils as well. This is interesting. They've sent me the Inktense Ink tends to use a guide. I've not seen one of these before. Oh, that's good. It talks about using ink tends with fabrics. I was curious about that. And then... So the ink tense block is just a sample, which can probably supply a random colour at a cheaper price than normal. I'll play with all of these later. And then I've got a couple of graphite tint extra large blocks from Derwent and a couple of the tinted charcoal extra large blocks. In my last art haul video, I'd bought this set of extra large charcoals, but there is a newer set out from Derwent which has got a couple of different colours from these. So I thought rather than buying the new set and repeating them, I'd just buy the extra colours that came in the new set. And one is forest pine, the other is sanguine, and although there's a sanguine in the set, I believe that they're like a different shade. So I'll have a play with those in a little bit. So that's everything from Ken Bromley Art Supplies. Something I got from Amazon as well are the Derwent Extra Large Graphites. Now again, this is the older set and there is a newer version of these out now. And again, the colours vary slightly. So I decided to go down the route of buying the older set and buying the colours which aren't included in the older set. Because together these came to about the same price as the new set. But with me being able to have... Eight rather than six. So the older set has a soft and a very soft uh, grey black sticks and the newer set I believe has a port and an aubergine instead so it's like a more colourful set. And I think Derwent do a separate set now of just the grey black graphites but I didn't want all of that set so I'm glad I've just got a couple from that now. So I'll just have a go at swatching all of these out now because I'm dying to play with them. So I've already shown the olive green from Derwent Pastel Pencil range. And then this is the violet. And it feels fairly similar to the green. Oh, it's nice and smooth and soft. I 
That's the Derwent Chroma Flow. Okay, next I'll try out some of these Caran d'Ache Neo Colours, the oil pastels. So they're quite firm oil pastels. They feel harder than Snellier oil pastels and Paul Rubens higher pastels. They remind me most of um, Mungio, but I'm really impressed with, with these ones I've just tried out because greens seem a bit of a problematic colour in oil pastels. And yeah, those are lovely. And I'll just see how the white layers over a darker colour. Great. So next I'll try these Holbein oil pastels. I'll try not to spoil the name. Wow, so they're all that's really quite firm. And it's got a different kind of consistency to the Caran d'Ache. I don't quite know how to summarize it. And then here's the white one. That's pretty good coverage too. Yeah, I can't really comment on these too much until I've done a picture with them. Other than to say they're quite firm and they've got quite nice coverage and seem quite smooth. I think I might do a separate video on the Derwin Extra Large Blocks, uh, the graphite tints and the charcoals. So I won't swatch them all out now. I'm just going to try out the new ones. So uh, that's Port, which is one of my favourite graphite tint colours. So I've got the pencils of them. And this is Aubergine, another of them that I really like. And then you can pick it up straight from the blocks themselves as well. And then I'll just try out these tinted charcoal blocks. And the charcoal as well is water soluble, quite nice. And just out of curiosity, I'll try the other sanguine in the old set. I oh, know that's interesting, they're both the same colour. I'm sure in one 
swatching out that I saw they looked different but never mind it's a nice color and then the last thing I'll try on this page is the ink tense extra large block and this is poppy red Ooh, wow so these don't re-wet very easily once they've been activated wow that is a lot of intense color and you can pick those up as well from the block i have the in ink tense blocks like the small thin ones so i definitely can't justify getting a big set of these but they do look like a lot of fun all right so that's those things So I don't know a huge amount about uh, my Marie Blue paints. Uh, I know they're made in Italy and it just says they have 90 colours made from the highest quality pigments for maximum light vest. Achieve intense washes as well as extraordinary transparency and they're formulated with um, natural cordofan gum arabic. So let's give them a try. So this is pyrrole orange. Oh, that rewets nicely. Conacridone Lake. So it looks like they have a three star light fast system. And all the ones on this card are three star. Oh, that's lovely. Then green gold. Ooh, the sun's come out. And ultramarine deep. Turquoise Cobalt I hope the camera's coping okay with these light changes because I've got shadow and bright light I really like these paints though. They really wet nicely and they're really rich and clear. And then the last one's Payne's Grey. I think this would make a really fun mixing palette actually. These six colours. OK, 
Okay. Well, they were fun to play with. So here they are close up. Interestingly, they're all single pigment colours, including the Payne's Grey. And all the other Payne's Greys I've got are mixed pigments, but this one's PBK26. So next up, I'll swatch the Rosa watercolours. So I've got quite a few Rosa Gallery watercolours, and I do really enjoy them. They're inexpensive and they re-wet easily and just nice bright vivid colours. So it'll be interesting to try their granulated ones. Actually, I'll do the gold and silver first in these two. So I've just let them sit with water for a minute or two. Because metallics can sometimes be a bit hard to re-wet. Just put some black sharpie down as well. So it's not an opaque paint. It's got a very pretty sparkle to it. Okay, so the other rows of gallery paints I'm not going to pre-wet. That's quite a pretty colour. So that's the magenta grey that I've bought. I definitely was going to get this one because it looks like a great earthy green for landscapes. It's your green. Oh, look how nicely that's granulating already. Okay, maroon brown. That's nice. I hadn't come across PBR 25 before I got the Rosa Gallery Royal Brown, which is PBR 25. And I've used it quite a bit since I really, really like this pigment. And that's a lovely mix. Golden brown. Wow, that's granulated so fast. And cobalt grey. Violet black. That's so yummy. And the 
last one is carbon black. So I have the cobalt grey and the violet black. Oh wow, I really like these paints. Oh my gosh, I'll show them up close. That jade green's lovely. I really like this golden brown as well. Cobalt grey is super interesting. You can see there the red coming out in it, the PR108. And the other rose of gallery paint which I bought is the Opera Rose. I leave the edges of the stickers on because I've got the name and the pigment information there. Just splodge it on this one. Great, so that's a lot of fun. Last week I did a video about visiting Contemporary Cornwall, an art gallery in Penzance. And these are a couple of kind of leaflety things I picked up from there. So the first one is um, work by Jane Askey, who I absolutely love. I'll link to her again in the description box. And this is just a glossy pamphlet of some of her paintings that are in the gallery at the moment. And then also on display in the gallery at the moment is Maxine Hart. And again, I really, really enjoy her work. And then I also picked up this book from David Mankin's Voyages, which is signed. I'm interested to look closer at his work and just see his mark making. I think his abstracts are really interesting. And I saw some of these at the gallery as well. Also in this art hall I've got this little baron which is used for pressing down the paper in lino cut printing. I've been doing it with a wooden spoon so far and it's a bit of a pain to hold so I thought I'd give this a go. This is just a cheap one off Amazon. There's some incredible looking barons out there but they are super expensive so I'll just take this one at the moment as a step up from the wooden spoon. And then finally, I've got two enormous books. This first one has been on my Amazon wish list for ages and it's been super expensive. But I saw that it had a price drop last week and so I picked it up. Before I did though, I had a look online just to 
look at a couple of other reviews to see if I definitely, definitely wanted it. And I came across Sandy Hester's video on this book and she also reviewed this book in the same video, Enigmas and Variations by Mary Fedden. And I fell in love with that book as well from Sandy's review. So ended up getting both of them. I really, really like Fairfield Porter's way of painting. It's very, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It kind of paints in blocks. Which feels like something that I can do or that I'm drawn to. So yeah, I suppose I mean like this. You can see like some of the marks in his work and it feels like an exciting next step to kind of work towards this kind of work. So a lot of his work is more complex than that. But yeah, I just I just love his mark making and the overall effect of them. And it's such a big book. There's so much in here to spend time with. And then Mary Fedden's book. I don't know if I like her finished work as much, but I think some of the techniques she uses are so interesting. And I just want to kind of sit and look at them close up. Some of it feels quite primitive, really, but also quite emotive. I don't really know how to describe it. So, yes, anyway, these are my latest art loves. And I hope you enjoyed taking a look at them. I hope you'll join me again. Thanks so much. Bye.